Okay. Uh, hello, welcome. It is uh, it's May the 13th. It is the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. I am Alan, your host. Uh, very nice to see you all. Um, hope you're all well. It is time, that time again, you know, the, when we do that thing that we always do every week and tell each other what we did last week, what we're going to do this week, and what we're currently blocked on. Um, so let's do that. Uh, my name, I got here first, so I'm going to quick, I'm going to quickly go first and uh, tell you about what I was doing last week, which was mostly working on content for IPFS camp. I put some sneak peek images there if you look at the actual preview, um, working on like a DAG visualizer. Uh, so you can just drop your file on the, uh, on the, on the thing um, and it will sh draw a graph of the resulting DAG that gets built for um for the, your particular configuration so like if you ipfs add stuff you get you use like a balanced dag if you use mfs you'll be using a trickle dag and so this tool will allow you to kind of toggle between them for any one given file uh, and change tweak all the dials and stuff um, but it basically allows you to see how things are laid out in ipfs um, and you can also uh, drop multiple fi files on it, and then it will show you how the, it will point to the uh, any deduped blocks uh, that you have there. So it can uh, demonstrate the deduping powers that IPFS has, which is super rad. Anyway, that is super early work in progress. That's why it is pink, because <laughs> uh, the better colors haven't come along yet. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's that. I was working on that last week, so that's that's kind of fun. Um, still got loads to do for that. Um, because that sucked up a whole lot of my time, but it was really fun, so I kept doing it. I've also um, released the JS IPFS HTTP client version 31. Um, thanks to Dirk for all of the work on the refs stuff, um, which is now in there. Uh, we already had refs, but we didn't have the pull stream or readable stream versions of them in the client. Um, so that's in there now, and there is a pull request which is on the cusp of being merged for JS IPFS, which implements the refs endpoint, and that will be available in 0.36. Speaking of which, uh, I started the release process for 0.36, so hopefully at some point this week, or maybe early next week, hopefully this week, um, we'll get a new version with a bunch of things. Uh, click on the link to see the uh, list of stuff. Uh, uh, that's not interesting. Uh, I enabled Greenkeeper on JS IPFS and the client and interface IPFS core um, just to see how it works. It seems to be okay so far. It's pretty pull requesty, uh, <laughs> so that's been fun. Um, and what else? I, other than like the camp content, I've mainly been working on the um, the tweak which will um, make any CID v1 CIDs that we create, if you two string them, they will become base32 uh, encoded strings rather than base58. Um, and so the, that just is, was basically a small PR to JSCID, but everything depends on JSCID. So I've just been kind of propagating that through. Uh, and there we had, there is an issue with like IPLD because we can't really release a new uh, a breaking change of IPLD because it's already released a breaking change of IPLD to add the async await stuff. So we're having to bring that stuff into new release. Um, so it's just, it's just fun times, but it should be good eventually. Um, so that's basically what I've been doing uh, this week. I will be, uh, I'm not blocked on anything and I will be hopefully releasing JS IPFS 036 and I will try and do some more work on um, IPFS camp courses for the camp. And that is me. Any questions? Lido. Uh, regarding base 32, it's uh, is the plan to still like include it in the next release on JS IPFS or? Uh, yeah. Though? Okay. Yeah, it's happening. Uh, it, it's just it just means there's a bunch of dependencies that we need to get merged beforehand. Um, and I've talked to Alex about what he's doing because he, much of his work that he's doing for the Unix FS importer, exporter and MFS work also will need to be merged in some way and used. So, um, and he thinks he will be able to get that done before the end of this week. So with any luck, everything will align perfectly and we can just do a release and it will be all fun. 
um, all fun times forever. Um, but this will be this will be really good, um, really good to get out there. And I'm very excited. So yeah, Lido again. Uh, follow up question: uh, Will uh, sharding support be also in this release? Did you like talk with uh, Alexa about that or? Sharding support in what way? What do you mean? I think there there is an issue, but maybe. Uh, sharding support around NFS. Uh, there was a uh, around uh, actually sharding support uh, around uh, HTTP gateway, because uh, that one is uh, need support for sharded directories which were was missing. It was like a blind spot. Uh, can you but, can you link me to the issue? Oh, I will put it in, in my update. So okay, cool. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Uh, any other questions? All right. Uh, let's move on then. Who is who is next on the list? Next on the list is Dirk. Welcome back to the call. Would you like to share your update? With us? Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be back. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm in Managua, so this might be a little bit choppy, but um, as Alan said, I've been working a bunch on the REFT endpoints, so just about got there, uh, just fixing up a couple of things in the unit tests. And then uh, I've also been working on garbage collection. So with it, we had a bit of discussion, I'll add a link to the issue, but basically we decided to go with the same algorithm as Go uses, the Go IPFS, which is a mark and sweep algorithm. And I pretty much got that implemented. I just need to implement locking now. So there's a little bit more discussion about that, but I think we have a, a way forward. Lido has a question. I got a question because uh, when we start running JS IPFS in people's browsers, uh, it would be cool to limit uh, the quota. Uh, is it uh, on the roadmap after uh, GC or is it uh, the same thing? Like in the, sa in the same batch of work? I think he's frozen. Yeah, I think we're going to one and the other, right? So, so, right. so the, the, you froze. Yeah, basically, it, it, it is planned to add it in as part of this quarter's work. Uh, so we need to get this done and then, then get on to adding, adding that in as well. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. If there's no other questions for Dirk, then we will move on again. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Jacob, you're up next. Can yeah, uh, last week started work on uh, IPFS camp course uh, that will be featuring some libp2p concepts. Uh, continue to work on that this week as well. Um, last week we released J JS libp2p to update that includes missed signing for PubSub. So anybody who has that, whenever Go decides that they want to release their breaking change, we won't lose interop. Um, did some more DHT configuration performance testing. I think that should be pretty good to go. Uh, so I'll create a PR for that um, this week and we can play around with that. The DHT query times are still gonna be pretty long. So we'll probably still see some timeouts. Um, we may need to look at like keep alive for the HTTP API uh, for the daemon in order to prevent socket hangups from happening for the CLI um, until we can get better latency on the network. Uh, for lib P2P, which is the next series of things that I'll be working on. Um, we released the lib P2P MDNS update that included the compatibility layer for Go that Alan added. Um, so that's there. Also the MDNS spec uh, got merged in lib P2P. So hopefully we can start collaborating on getting um, Go and JS implementations to the right place so that they also work with Rust. Um, and then I started on the libp2p nat traversal work, which is starting with the identify push protocol um, in JS, which is already in Go, which lets us, as our addresses change with nat negotiation, we'll actually be able to push those address updates out to our peers so that they can 
come and request us on our, our new uh, addresses. Um, this week, continue on the IPFS cor camp coursework, uh, the DHT PR, and then I'll also look at starting uh, Autonat when I get identify, identify push protocol done. Um, Autonat is a protocol in libpdp that lets us communicate with peers in the network to figure out what our NAT status is and also our observed address better, um, which is why we need the identify push protocol so that once we have updated addresses that we can forward those off to everybody. Does anybody have questions? I have a question. Um, <laughs> all right, so for the people who are new to the school or watching it after the fact, um, PubSub message signing, what does that mean? Yeah, so PubSub message signing, basically what was going on is we would send a message in PubSub and you don't know where it came from. There's no way to verify who it came from. So what we do with signing is we actually take the message and you use our private key and you'll actually sign that whole message and then add your signature to it. And then when we send that along to peers, peers will be able to verify, look at that, look at the, who the message is from and actually verify that that person signed it so that we're not getting arbitrary pub sub messages from random people trying to pretend that they are who they, who they say they are or not. Any other questions? Nice, thank you. Any other questions? All right, if there's no more questions, we will move swiftly on. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, Vashko, it's you up next. Would you like to give us your update, please? Hey, guys. So before going on holiday, I implemented the initial PR for the interface connection. And then uh, when I arrived, I tried basically to uh, get it and uh, put it to, to be used in TCP and WebSockets. And then uh, I arrived to some conclusions that uh, things didn't make that much sense I, as I was expecting, uh, according to the previous version of the interface connection, which was not really a connection. And it made me like think and uh, uh, also analyze the Go implementation. And after that, I ended up making a, a new proposal for a completely different interface connection. And this came also with the interface stream. Uh, I have the, the, the link for the issue with the proposals. Uh, Jacob already provided some feedback. I think uh, Alan and Dirk already saw it. I have been iterating according to the feedback and uh, I think it's getting in a really better shape than it was before. Uh, other than that, I updated the uh, API in uh, uh, libp2p WebRTC Web star. It, uh, the previous version had security and performance problems, and I updated it in the context of uh, Alan's update for the JSAPFS one. Also, yeah, today I got the interop test for IPNS over PubSub finally green again, and Alan merged it. So finally, that PR is merged. So uh, for this week, uh, I've been also uh, getting uh, uh, up to speed in the reviews for the Gossip Sub implementation. The current status is that uh, uh, the, the PR has the CI completely green. The code seems uh, good according to the specs and uh, according to the implementation of Go. I tried to review with uh, all those in mind and uh, basically uh, we are, I think, in the finish line to to merge the, the PR. Basically, uh, what we are missing now is uh, uh, interrupt tests with the flood sub and interrupt tests uh, with the Go with P2P. Uh, I've been uh, uh, discussing this with Mike here and uh, and we also with uh, we meet again and uh, and we will probably start by merging the current state of the PR after my last review and uh, iterate from there because the PR is getting really big and massive to review. Uh, so I hope to get that initial version of uh, Gossip Sub merge this week. Uh, also, I want to update the interface connection pull request with the new proposal and with tests for being used and also create the interface stream. Then I will also attend the Data Terra Nemo by the end of the week. So I will not be they're available on Friday and also sometime on Wednesday because I will fly to Berlin. 
And that's it for me. Any questions? Not really a question, but I think the interface connection and interface stream should probably just live in the same repo since those are going to be used um, quite a bit together. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think maybe it's a good call. And then the for PubSub, we're probably going to need to look at updating the JS configuration because right now it's like flood subs hard coded in there. So we're probably going to need to make it so that PubSub is actually configurable and then roll out configuration changes for pub sub to um, JS IPFS so that people can actually choose flood sub or gossip sub rather yeah, than I, having it bundled with GF yeah. or PDP. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, uh, doing that work of configuration while we also work on the interrupt tests. Cool. Do you know if gossip sub is the default for go at the moment or is it yes behind i think so yeah right. so the, they'll run protocol negotiation they'll try to use gossip sub and if that fails they'll use flood sub cool okay any other questions for vashko okay moving on quickly thank you vashko uh we've got jim up next would you like to give us your update um, sure so um it did a little bit of work on peer based pinner um ipns Thing I had in there before was just giving too much trouble, slow, you turned the wrong thing when it rebooted. Um, so I'm, I realized I could use the IPFS cluster and putting all the data into IPFS cluster and you can add little uh, names and things on them. So I decided I could just use that instead of IPNS. So I did that and it's much, much more stable. Um, I spent an hour and I brainstormed uh, mini projects for package managers with Andrew Nesbitt and came up with a whole bunch of things. I have to break them up as issues now. Um, I synced up with Alan um, and uh, spent a couple of sessions working on Course C for apps with Hugo and Lidl, and that's coming along really, really well. I'm happy with where we're at. Um, and last week, the big thing was I went to Portland to, to attend this conference and lots and lots of interesting conversations. Um, and met a few outside people as well. And um, so this week I'm going to, uh, PeerPath's getting really, really close to being able to something that can flip on uh, with the pinners working properly now. I can do some front-end work and do some more IPFS camp prep. And that's it for me. Brad, thank you, Jim. Any questions for Jim, quickly? All right, if no questions, then continue on. Uh, next up, we've got Hugo. Uh, would you like to give us your update? Yes, so uh, I've been struggling a, a little bit with the uh, happiness resolve with the uh, domains, um, but I guess uh, that's, that work is almost done. Uh, I'm only having a few errors on the IPNS PubSub tests. Uh, and that's because uh, I needed to actually include the um, recursive true default uh, in these PRs or else it would be really hard to make HTTP which tests will go and JS APFS which tests, uh, which tests with the API and JS work everything work together and all the tests fast. So I needed to include that, but that breaks PubSub. I'm trying to figure out what's the problem in there, but I think that will be the last problem I hopefully uh, encounter on this stuff. I also, uh, on these PRs, I started uh, um, changing the CLI test a little bit. I discussed this with uh, Alan. Um, because I found, I found that most of the tests, at least on the IPNS um, subsystem, are kind of duplicated in there. Um, and we actually don't need to, to, to test uh, everything again, because we already test in the interface core, uh, partially on uh, JSAPFS core, and also through the HTTP API. So um, testing it again on the CLI is kind of, uh, there's no purpose to, to do that. But we still have uh, some logic, some simple logic that we, we would like to test 
uh, about uh, CLI specific stuff. So uh, that took me a while because the CLI is not actually easy to test right now. Uh, but I found a way which is pretty simple and um, I will push that those changes to the PR. Um, hopefully you guys will see it and give some feedback so we can roll out to the other subsystems. I also started working on the DNS resolver. There's still uh, much to do there, but it's, I started the work. I did a bunch of stuff for EpiFest Camp Course C with Lidl and Jim. And hopefully uh, this week I will be able to finish the file down API uh, pull request so we can release the HTTP client with that stuff in. Um, I will also probably be doing a, a couple more sessions with Jim and Lidl for the IPFS camp and I'll be attending the DTN in Berlin. That's, that's me. Any questions? Okay, we are quickly running out of time. So if you've got questions, then please uh, get in touch with Hugo afterwards. Um, so next up it is Lidl. I'll try to be brief. So there's a new stable uh, release of IPFS Companion. And I mention it because it includes a prototype of embedded HTTP gateway in Brave that can oh, actually open Wikipedia, which is quite cool. And uh, that's embedded node, so no third party software, external node, and stuff like that. Uh, some related. Uh, releases uh, and work around IPFS camp course C with uh, Hugo and Jim. Uh, I'm sort of, maybe not like, it's not a hard block, but uh, the work Alex did uh, for uh, adding uh, sharding support to JS IPFS gateway, I retested those uh, changes and those changes actually are shipped with IPFS companion to make the Wikipedia work. So it's like, very good, and I fully endorse reviewing those PRs. <laughs> and uh, there's a I rebased uh, another uh, PR for uh, JSAPFS gateway updates to add IPNS namespace support, but that depends on all the IPNS PRs that will eventually land. And the next week will be IPFS camp and the companion Brave uh, switcher, and that's all. Cool, thank you, Lido. Uh, moving quickly on because we're running out of time. Uh, we've got Alex, would you like to give us your update? So I'm still deep in async await land for Unix FS and MFS. The tests are passing in all the modules, the interface tests are passing, the inter op tests are almost passing. The last uh, piece of the puzzle is the triple DAG. Um, the triple DAG JS implementation seems to have no, has like kind of nothing in common at all with the Go one. Uh, it doesn't produce the same structures or the same hashes. So I'm making it do that, which is cool. Uh, it's also like got a whole bunch of just pausing in it. Um, so it's actually really slow. And the new one is way faster, though still creating incorrect CIDs at the moment. But it will soon be fast and correct. Well, it's faster and correct. Um, that's going to be me. I'm also going to DTN Comp uh, at the end of the week, same as Vasco, and uh, did a bit on uh, IPFS camp planning for the Lib P2P um, uh, course with uh, Jacob and Ra. And I would imagine there'll be some more of that. Uh, that's going to be me. Thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Uh, all right, we've still got two minutes. Does anyone have any questions for Alex? Real quick, otherwise we'll move on to questions. Questions. Sorry, does someone have any questions for Alex? I just flicked away from the screen. No, okay. All right. Uh, next up, we've got uh, so general question. Someone's put: Should we ha do an iterative, non-breaking approach to the async iterators in modules such as the DHT? Uh, yeah, I asked that because uh, Kumavis did a PR uh, where basically extracted some of the work that Dirk did to, a, to a, a new PR, which does not have breaking change. And uh, I don't know if I should uh, uh, spend time in reviewing that now or if I should 
just wait until the more, most priority PRs land and we do our uh, previous approach. I know what your opinion is. My gut feeling is that if, if it's just been done by someone randomly, then we can look at it and get it in. Um, like I, I, it's essentially kind of, I mean, it's good work, but we're going to have to undo a bunch of it, I believe, when we, when we completely switch. So there is some, some wasted work there, and I'd rather not look for that to happen. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I have more or less the same opinion in as you. I think that uh, we should not spend that much time, but if a review does not take that much time, and after that we only have to remove uh, promisify or a few things, I think may maybe it's worth to to move because after that it will be easier also to get the the module to the final line. Okay, Dirk had a hand. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that PR, when I made it, was probably a bit too early, and there's been a bunch of changes since then. So I think if people start working on porting that PR back into master, it's just going to get very confusing. My opinion is we should wait until, until like, you know, the DHT is in a pretty stable place, and then, then we can start porting over bits of it. Yeah, maybe we, we should get the DHT in a better state first. Got a hand from Jacob. Yeah, so I am on board with making iterative changes on the larger modules. Um, I think it's going to be inevitable. Um, if we look at like a lot of the PRs that we started doing, like we're creating them, and if we have any dependencies on those, those PRs are going to sit. So we're going to have to re go back and like redo a bunch of PRs that we've already done because there's been so much work that's happened on them internally. Um, and so that's a lot of redundant work there as well. So I think we're going to hit redundancy either way, but I think the developer experience when we make those async changes, at least like, hey, the external API is now async await, that becomes better for developers to consume. And then I think later on that, like those iterations, in my opinion, are, are easier to consume than, than going back and, and trying to refactor stuff over time as we, we populate these these PRs up. Yeah, I mean the DHT is a tricky one because it's it's having a lot of active development right now. It's only just come into being and it it yeah, there's it it it's being changed quite a lot. And yeah, in in hindsight I think the actually converting it to async await was probably a little bit soon. Um, but yeah, I guess it's good to be pr pragmatic about this because we're not going to have that. We're not for like I didn't ever expect that for every module we'd be able to do our plan of we do everything at the bottom and slowly propagate everything up and nothing stays sat there for a long time. And um, it's just the ideal if we have to do this for some modules, then let's let's do it. That's fine. Um, but like I, I just want to avoid doing too much work that's going to just be undone later. Um, but yeah, if if it's if it makes sense, then absolutely let's let's do it. So um, I would say let's let's look at um, the work uh, and and get it merged if we can. Cool. So we'll just leave that tentatively up to maintainer discretion. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, in which case we are over time. We have cross-team update from Terry, if anyone is able to stay on the call and would like to, or if Terry has time to give your update, then please go ahead. You're, the floor is yours. Yeah, so the MFS tutorial is getting so close to feeling like it's done. There are a couple little bugs near the end, but you can now read through the entire you know, text of the lessons and what the exercises are to get a sense of what everything will be. Um, so I'm very open to feedback there. Also, a lot of you on this call are working on IPFS camp materials. Um, Lytle reached out to me and scheduled some time to talk about, you know, talk through what the plans are, see whether anything fits in proto school content. Whether it does or not, I'm happy to have that conversation with any of you. So please don't hesitate to reach out to set something up so we can think through that together. And I can give you a sense of kind of the limitations of the platform and what works well there.
cool. Thank you, Terry. Um, all right, that's cool. Um, that's it, apart from other notes. So I'm out on Friday. Uh, Vashko already said that he's partially out on Wednesday and Friday. Um, and I think that's all we have for today. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and I will see you next week uh, for another round of what are you doing in IPFS? Uh, have a nice week and see you then. All right, bye.